if you're like us, you're always singing House of the Lord, and that's just one of the many reasons we're so glad Phil Wickham is in the house. Welcome back to Spirit 105.3. And Phil, we got to start here. You were on Good Morning America not too long ago, right? I was on Good Morning America not too long ago. Isn't that wild? I can't believe I can say that. (laughs) Can you please take us behind the scenes? For those of us who will never be on Good Morning America, what was it like? Well, it was really me teaming up with The Chosen crew. Whoever's not familiar with The Chosen, it's this uh, TV series that has become wildly popular. It's closing in on a billion views based on the life of Jesus and his disciples. And it's beautiful, and it's brought many people closer to Jesus, including me. And so The Chosen did a Christmas special that was in theaters that ended up breaking records for what type of movie it was and for people going. It just was this amazing thing. And I had a really huge honor of being one of the artists a part of it. When ABC saw the success of the movie and, and heard the music, they thought, hey, we want some of this music a part of Good Morning America. So we got to go into the studio. I mean, it was it was amazing. <laughs> I just For me, I just popped in and everybody was ready to go and it looked beautiful and the band sounded great. I was there for about 45 minutes and we, we tracked it a few times and like, cut we're good and so for me it was like a whirlwind fly and fly out situation but i think for me it was when like my aunt she's not like really even we're working on it but yep. she's not even a, a christian yet you know <laughs> like but we're praying for her and talking a lot about jesus she just freaks she, she could care less if i'm at lakewood with joel osteen or meet up <laughs> but but i'm on good morning america i was getting like my my aunt and my neighbors were freaking out you know and they're like <laughs> so it was, it was a blast That is so awesome. And I got to say, we loved your white sneakers in the Chosen Christmas movie and your performance. It was awesome. But I kept thinking, those are some really cool kicks. Thank you. Well, let me say, it's C-L-A-E, Clay Shoes from Los Angeles. They send me shoes every quarter. I've kind of become, uh, I've become sponsored by Clay because my my buddy works for the company. So I got to say that out loud. They're so kind to me. And I love those shoes. (laughs) Very nice. (laughs) So we've been thinking with Valentine's Day coming up. Um, uh oh, is that w- is that real? Oh no, <laughs> it is. When is Valentine's? Oh, well, fourteen. Oh, I've got some time. You okay. got some time. <laughs> this is not meant to scare you. And actually, when you hear the question, you'll be relieved. Thinking about God's love, and when when have you experienced it the most? Oh my goodness! I just came home from the first week of this of this Him in Heaven tour I'm doing, and my kids all ran their faces and their smiles and their hugs. When I came home, I, I don't think I'll ever forget it. I don't know if my heart was just in the right place or I was just missing them so much, but I just felt I felt God's love in that moment. Where And I felt so, I'm like, I can't believe that these beautiful little people miss me and call me dad and care about me being the one that pushes them on the swing. You know what I mean? Like yes. they, they want me to be there. I just felt so honored to be that role in their life in that moment. And then my wife comes up, who's just like, just consistent lover of Jesus, amazing, beautiful woman, just hugs me and has held down the fort, single momming it, and just like not frustrated, not bitter, not t- just like, we're so glad you're home. Tell me all about it. You know, mm. I'm just, that's when I feel God's love. It's just like in the beautiful life, just behind the scenes that I get to be a part of and just doing homeschool with my kids and, and all, you know, just the whole thing. I just love it. You're like an artist of words. I really appreciate the pictures that you paint. How do you and Mallory keep things fresh with, you know, keeping Valentine's Day in mind when we remember, oh, you know, this is love day. You know, how do you keep it fresh on the other 364 days a year? We try to at least once a week sit down and not have our phones with us. We actually have a coffee shop in town we love. And it's usually like Wednesday morning. We'll go out two or three hours and just look at each other in the eyes. No kids around. And let's download. Let's pray. Let's see what, what's coming up this week. How can I be there for you? How, how can you be there for me? And t- how are you doing? What can I be praying you, praying for you? What's on your mind? What's frustrating you? We've gone out of the house to be intentionally together, to go someplace we love together. And, and it's simple. It's not overcomplicated and it's doable for us, you know, with four kids and all that stuff. Just to have that moment of like, this is our time. Our phones are, we left them in the car in the parking lot and it's just me and you. Let's make sure we're all, we're on the same page, you know, and Mm -hmm. that's not, you know, that's not extravagant, but I found neither of us really like extravagant. Even Valentine's (laughs) Day is funny. My wife, my wife's like, my wife does not like to do something special for Valentine's Day. Isn't that funny? I love it. She's like, man, I I don't want there to be one day a year you think about me. She's like, Valentine's Day was for when we were, when you were trying to make me love you. You know what I mean? I get Mallory. (laughs) That's how she feels about, she's like, now now let's let's do a mini Valentine's Day once a week. You know, it's like, Mm. okay.
Nice. So you're coming to Tacoma in April? Yes. That's the rumor on I the street? Am. I know, and I think it's getting close to selling out already, which is crazy. Of course it is. I can't believe it. I just, this whole tour, I, we, so I just got done with the first week. I just kind of had this out-of-body experience moment, like where I, there were so many things leading up to this tour, like things that had to do with the tour and other things that I, we had to get done for the two weeks leading up to it that I really hadn't had much time to think about it. And then I remember the first night I was standing on stage with other worship leaders that I just absolutely love. And for some reason they said, yes, I'll come out on your tour with you. And I'm just like, that's amazing. <laughs> and then I look back there and I, and all my best friends that are in this band that are incredible musicians are, are, are supporting and smiling in there. And then I look out and the whole place is sold out. And I look up at the lights. And I'm like, I can't believe those are my lights on my tour. Those are amazing you know <laughs> and then and then we're singing battle belongs and and people sing it when I, with my hands lifted high oh god the battle belongs to you and i couldn't see anybody in that moment without their hand up it was everything within me to not start crying at the goodness and kindness of god in my life because i just i think back to me being a junior high worship leader in a stinky sweaty junior high room with 12 kids and just having no idea what god had for me I think of where these songs came from and that they get to be a part of other people's lives and prayer lives and worship lives. I think about how unworthy without without the blood of Jesus over my life, how un, how unworthy I would I am to stand here. Mm-hmm. And yet I don't have to dwell on my unworthiness. I just dwell on the grace of God of like I can't believe I'm here. I felt like a kid all over again. Oh, and I'm just so okay. thankful. I know. I'm so thankful for this tour and I can't wait to be up there in Seattle with you guys. We can't wait. Phil, you're gonna be here just really days before Easter, which really is the cool day of the year. It means everything to us who believe in Jesus and know what he did. Mm. What does that day mean to you? Goodness gracious. I need to think on it. I need to think on it. What does it mean? What Every year I feel like for Christmas and Easter, every year over the course of that month and those weeks leading up to it, something different sticks out. And I'm so curious what God will show me this year, but hmm. something new that my heart lights up. It's like, wow, I've never thought of it this way or that way. And I'm, and I'm really excited for what God shows me this year. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think of those disciples putting so much stock in this man and they believe he's he's the messiah but also there's all this doubt and they're trying to figure out what even he means and what he's saying and stuff is confusing because it's not what they expected but it's better and, and it's different and it's like why isn't he taking over the government like what's going on this is supposed to be a war um but he's, he's talking about a war but then he's not going he's just saying don't fight he's like i'm gonna go to die all this stuff is so confusing and and in that moment i'm just i, I just read it about it recently where they get this this news that the the grave is empty, and they go running to it and looking to it. And, in, and the angel says, "Why do you? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Yes, um, he is not here, for he is risen." And everything in that moment for those disciples and and for us changing forever. And that that we can live through life now because of that, not just because of the cross, but because of the empty grave. We can claim that. And now, in any situation, pandemic, job loss, death which I just had recently had someone close to me die of COVID and all of it, that we can stand here with hope and joy. We can say the battle belongs to you. We can say there's joy in the house of the Lord because that tomb is empty. The fact that we sing from a place of victory and, and hope and joy in any situation, that's what that day means to me. It's like I can live it's not just, oh, great, I get to be in heaven one day, and so God's going to take me out of this hellhole I'm in now one day. If that's not what it is anymore. It's that right now, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right now. This is what it is. And he goes and tells all these parables about the kingdom of heaven, and he, and he talks about how he's starting the kingdom of heaven right now. And you can act, say, your will be done. Your kingdom come here right now as it is in heaven. And that's all because of that empty grave. And so I, I didn't know where I was going with this, but I think that's where I'm going with this. The fact that we can stand in victory and hope and joy in any situation because that stone was rolled away, that tomb is empty. I mean, how? what else can we be more thankful for than that, you know? Yes, I feel so filled up after hearing you talk about that. That was great. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you guys so much and can't wait to be up there with y'all. <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. <laughs> All right, see ya.